Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. We are going to play with the Zum Ambi server. This will get you onto ham radio digital voice modes without a ham radio. You're still going to need a license, but with this and a computer, we can get on the air. This device is a pretty neat little toy. It has in the upper corner here, the Ambi chip, which handles the encoding and decoding of digital voice modes. It has an ESP32 device here, which will get the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality, as well as the brains of the operation. It has an RJ45 jack, so you can connect this directly to your router, and it has micro USB for power and a spot for an SD card for your configuration needs. And configuration is really simple on this. The next thing you're gonna need is a computer that will run BlueDV software. Let's go get it all put together. We're gonna head over to Zum Radio's website, zumradio.com, and they have quite a few products. Let's take a look at the Ambi server. And you can get this at Ham Radio Outlet or at Martin Lynch and Sons if you're over the pond. And if you so desire, you can even put a 1.3 inch OLED screen on it to get you some more details. I don't have that in this configuration, so I don't know what it looks like. Maybe it's something that you can play with. One of the neat things you can also do is run this right over serial over USB so you don't even need to do network configuration work. We're going to do the Wi-Fi version just because it's a little more challenging and that would help you get a little more understanding on that. We need to configure the device for our network. And they have this really cool tool called the Ambi Server Configuration Tool. They wanted to make sure that name was very confusing. And then how will you connect? And it gives you a choice of LAN, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or USB port. I'm going to pick Wi-Fi, and it's going to ask me for my SSID. And all the links will be in the description down below, so make it very easy for you. My SSID here is living, and I will type in my password when it comes time to type in my password. And then I do not have a screen, so I don't have to worry about the screen settings, but it would let you set it this way or set it this way. So that way you can, you know, see it upside down or right side up. And that's it. As you're doing this, it is generating the config file and you can see it over here on the right hand side. There she is. Click the download button and save it to your SD card. Once you have it saved to your SD card, that's all that's on this card is the configuration file. So it doesn't need to be a big card. It doesn't need to be a fast card. It just needs to be a card. Put it back into your Ambi server and plug it in and you're good to go. Let's do that. All right. She's booting up. We've got red lights, blinky lights. I love it. Next up, we need to head over to pa7lim.nl and download a piece of software called BlueDV. BlueDV Windows with Ambi 3000, which is what this device is. It's not easy to find the download link because it's buried in the story of the software. But if you search for the word download, or if you just get down to this part of the page where it says you can download the latest version at the following location, there's your link. This link will be in the description down below for it to be a little bit easier for you to find. And here is what the download site looks like. We're going to go into the blue DV folder. We're going to go into beta. We're going to go into whatever operating system you have, Linux or Windows. I'm going to pick Windows because I'm running this on a Windows machine. And then I'm going to download the BlueDV9632 beta.zip file. When you download that, remember where you saved it. It's a zip file. Inside of that zip file, there is a MSI file, Microsoft installer file. Double click on that file and just run through the process of getting it done. Next, 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 and it's installed. It's, there's really no options necessary other than just clicking the buttons until you get to the end. Windows is going to probably pop up a little box that says, would you like to install software? Since we went through all the trouble to download the software and run the program, I'm pretty sure we wanted to install it. And it's just kind of a security blocker thing to, you know, are you sure? I, I think that you can make that decision there. I'm going to need my danger glasses for this part of the demo. What we need to do is figure out what IP address our device has received since we're using it on Wi-Fi. For me, I need to bring up a program called Angry IP Scanner. In settings under display, I'm going to check the radio button for a live hosts only. That way I don't get a list of every IP that isn't working. I only get a list of the ones that are working. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to hit Start. And what this is doing is this is scanning your network for every available IP address that's out there, and it's finding stuff. This device does not come back with a valid name for what its host is, so that's going to mean that it's going to be this .1, that's probably your router, so we can ignore that. Or it's gonna be this dot 30. So you just have to kind of play around with it and see if it'll actually work. Getting rid of some obvious choices. This isn't a networking video, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that. But I know it's not this DRM.local. I know it's not this machine here. Thank you very much. 
and I know it's not this machine here. This is the machine that I'm currently on. This is another machine that I know what it is. This is another machine that I know what it is. So it's one of these two unnamed ones. I know it's dot 30. I'm going to go with dot 30. But this is how you would figure it out. A little trial and error, a little guessing, a little deductive reasoning. Now that I am armed with the IP address of the device, let's get into our settings. Once you get the setup box up, make some intelligent decisions of what to put here, and I'll fill in some of the gotchas that I found while I was getting mine all set up. Your call sign is your call sign. All of the rest of this stuff is just fine. For D-Star, this is the Toad's D-Star Reflector. It is D-Star Module A, and it is XLX 546. And then NXDN, I don't have NXDN. I don't know anything about it, so put your NXDN ID in there if you have one. DMR, this is how I put mine in, where it says DMR ID for the hotspot. Put in your DMR number, mine is 3170318, and then put in 01 at the end to give it an indicator as to which hotspot this one happens to be. If you've got multiple hotspots on your network, make sure this number is unique and you're probably farther ahead than you need to be in order to do this video. The DMR ID simple is just your DMR ID. Again, mine is 3170318. Put yours in there. Otherwise you'd be impersonating me and that wouldn't be any fun. QRG, leave that at zero. Determine whether or not you want to enable these at start. I, I tend to turn these on one at a time when I want to use them, but you could have them all running all at start or you could have your favorite one running at start. Or you could have none running all at start, which is what I do, none at start. DMR type Brandmeister. If you have a reason to pick something other than Brandmeister, pick something other than Brandmeister. The Toad's DMR service is on Brandmeister. DMR master server. I picked 3104 US. There's 3101, 2, 3, and 4. Pick whichever one makes you happy or whichever one is in your country. Your master password. This is your DMR password that gets you into Brandmeister since this is the Brandmeister section of the configuration. DMR master. DMR plus master. I just left this alone. If you have a reason to, to change this, go ahead and change it. I don't have a TGIF password to go along with that. For Fusion, I put in my QTH location as my Maidenhead grid square. Again, I told it not to enable at start. The default reflector is YSF. The YSF room is called Toads for the Toads group or whatever one you'd like to put in there. I don't have any FCS desires, so I just left that blank the way it is. Now, for the device in question for today's video, the Ambi server from Zum Radio, this is how you would set that up. Use Ambi, yes, and it's a ThumbDV, DV Stick 3X, Ambi server, etc, etc, etc. Model Ambi 3000 is the name of the chip. That's what you want there. I don't have it running on a serial port. I have it running over Wi-Fi. We're going to see that in a bit. DMR ID, again, put in your DMR ID. I don't know why it's asking for it twice, but it is. This was a gotcha that we had because this was PA7LIM's DMR ID, even though I had mine over here. So, nobody could hear me. And then use Ambi server. That's what this box is. This is your Ambi server box. After we went through the angry IP scanner earlier, I was able to get my IP address and through a little bit of trial and error, I figured out it was the dot 30 address. So type that address in here. Port 2460. This is the default port. This will be set in the config file that we downloaded from the Zum radio website. If you have a need to change this for whatever reason, change it in the zum.ini file on the SD card, reboot the Ambi server device, make sure that the number matches here. A little advanced networking stuff there for you. If you need to change this, you probably already know what you need to do. The D-Star C4 FM text, leave that as the way it is or change it to suit your needs. It's just what shows up when you make a contact with somebody else. So you could put in your radio if you were using a radio. You could put in Blue DV, which is what we're using today. Or you could put in a simple hello message, you know, like your email address if you wanted to. PTT King, we're not using a radio, so there's no such thing as PTT King. So I left that at disabled. Click the save button and then you are good to get online. This button marked serial is kind of a kind of an interesting thing. Most of these devices are serial at heart. This is really just the on off switch for Blue DV. So I'm going to turn it on and it's going to be using my microphone and speakers off of my computer right here. So I'm going to join Fusion and at the top you have a choice of Fusion and then you have a choice of Fusion Rooms to get into. I'm going to click link and down at the bottom here you can see a status update of Fusion. Call status is linked to Toads. And right now I can't hear any traffic on Toads. It's midday on a Tuesday. There probably isn't going to be much traffic right now. Over here, this is going to be your PTT button, kind of like what you would have on a radio. You need to click it on, say something, and then turn it back off again. I'm going to go ahead and click it on and identify myself. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf on air using Blue DV and the Ambi Server 3000 from Zum Radio. Anybody out there? And I doubt I'll get a response back today. But that was a successful on air event for us. We just got on the air under the Toad's YSF room using the fusion mode through the device that we set up. It's all working. It's still working the next day. Congratulations. 
Actually, I'm in the middle of doing a video right now, and you are my co-star. I'm showing everybody how to do it in a shorter, more condensed, not live stream version. Thanks for coming back, Mike. Much appreciated. Oh, my privilege. This is KM9G, and I will be clear on your final. And that is how you do that. It works. If you want to pick a different mode, turn off or leave on Fusion and pick D Star. So for D Star, there's a D Star drop down where your choice is D Star. Fantastic. Pick whichever reflector you want to join. Pick whichever mode of that reflector you want to join into. Pick whether it's a reflector, a DCS, an XRF, an XLX, and then hit link and go through the same process. Push to talk, identify, have a conversation with somebody. This thing is great for travel where you may or may not be in range of a repeater. You might not want to bring a hotspot, a radio, a computer, battery packs, chargers, antennas, etc., etc., etc. It's fantastic for travel. And obviously the other modes work exactly the same way. Again, it supports DMR, D-Star, Fusion, and NXDN so far. Danger mode off. All right, that was a quick walkthrough of how to get things done. We figured out how to do this on the Ham Nuggets radio show. It's a live stream that I do on my channel on Monday nights where we find something that we don't know what we're doing and we figure it out together as a group. Fantastic little device. Links in the description down below for websites and documentation and all kinds of other information you might need. There's a video right up here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.